It's March 15th, 2018, and I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Dr. Marie Elizabeth Femonvi from the University of Liège in Belgium. Yeah. Since 1992, Dr. Femonvi has been running the pain clinic and has now had more than 9,000 patients who have had surgical procedures with hypnosis as either the sole or primary anesthetic. And so the opportunity to speak today about how that's done and how it all works, uh, it will be a real pleasure to hear. So welcome, Dr. Femovi. Welcome. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I'm really pleased to have the chance to talk to you. First question I'd like to ask is, how did you develop an interest in pain medicine? Okay, at the beginning of my medical studies, I wanted to choose gynecology or pediatrics. But during my internship in the delivery room, I realized that in attending the suffering of others without being able to help them was unbearable to me. And so at the end of my studies, I decided to choose anesthesia to have an effective way to suppress pain for others. And what I liked a lot in my job was to act and to see the results quickly. Uh, what I liked also, but was at the same time, I appreciate the relation with the patient, even it was for a short time. And the interest for pediatrics persisted, and I went for a year of specialization in uh, pediatric anesthesia in Montreal, where I did my PhD in clinical science on ventilatory weaning, especially for newborns operated on cardiac surgery. And when I came back to Belgium, I was lucky to get a research mandate and to explore the biochemical modification involved in IRDS, adult respiratory distress syndrome, and uh, other inflammatory problems like multiple organ failure. And the research was made uh, made me discover even more rigor of work and more nuanced reflection on the observed phenomenon. It helped me to stay very humble, but curious. We know so little. And I was asked to take responsibilities for the plastic surgery and the Department of Intensive Care uh, in Great Bernard patient where I had the opportunity also to work in close collaboration with surgeons who work in this department. And then uh, I perform a lot of conscious sedation. Conscious sedation is a technique uh, that were offered to patients who would like to stay conscious during surgery and avoid general anesthesia, especially for this kind of surgeons. The patient choose to be operated, so they, uh, they prefer to avoid general anesthesia. And so I, was, I learned that a very good relationship with the patient helps to reduce drugs and that most of injected uh, drugs can be, uh, uh, be less amount of drugs can be done and assure uh, comfort for this patient. And in 1991, I think uh, a Swiss anesthetist came in our department uh, and make a conference about hypnosis. He used hypnosis in burning setting. Uh, he was also anesthesiologist and worked in Geneva, and he used it for a burn dressing change in intensive care patients. And during this meeting, I learned that hypnosis is a patient talent, a gift, and that caregiver can learn this specific communication and uh, can, it can be used in patients. And uh, so I thought, uh, I thought it was also interesting to integrate this kind of technique in the operating room as an anesthesia technique and to standardize it while also evaluating its interest by uh, performing retrospective and prospective studies, uh, randomized clinical studies. At the same time, uh, reading articles about hypnosis uh, made me understand the bitter debate between two streams of South, the state and the non-state debate. And for me, a job as anesthesiologist, so a profession that is well known to be more technical with observation and results, 
it was able to convince neurologists working on, uh, especially those working on electrophysiologic exploration of sleep, and to submit a project to the National Research Fund to obtain funds for carrying out a fundamental neuroimaging um, study about hypnosis. And um, we checked subjects, volunteers in normal conscious state, and we asked them to live a pleasant life experience. And we, we checked what happened in the brain, what is brain activity, when these volunteers were in this specific um, conscious state. And we looked when they were in normal consciousness and when they do it in hypnosis. And then we discovered that the way that our brain work when people is in a hypnotic state was completely different from when it worked in a normal waking state. So we had uh, the opportunity to publish the paper in a journal with peer review. It was biological psychiatry in 1997, I think. And uh, this motivated also our research group to go further with other research and to explore the neurophysiological correlate of hypnotic pain modulation. This different clinical and neurophysiological study permit me to defend a thesis of aggregation also of the higher degree education in uh, the university in Belgium. And uh, as a professor in 2003, and afterwards as the director of the Department of Alcology and Palliative Care, I continue to use hypnosis, not only in surgical settings, but also with chronic pain patients and in palliative care patients. So when you start doing hypnosis with patients, can you describe the actual procedures that you're using? You said it's about revivifying a pleasant memory, but if you can be even more specific about that. Yes, it depends on what context we use hypnosis. We used uh, uh, especially a pleasant life experience in surgical settings. And um, then uh, we asked the patient to choose something pleasant that he would like to relive during surgery. And uh, we asked the patient to to do this during uh, surgery when we observe the patient. And uh, in uh, chronic pain settings or in oncologic settings, uh, that is completely different. We work with group of patients where we invite the patient to learn self-hypnosis, but not only self-hypnosis. We ask them to learn also self-care, take care for themselves by giving them strategies to better cope with their life and not with the problem. And uh, we have different exercise uh, that we can propose to the patient uh, in when they learn self-hypnosic technique. Uh, so we have a, 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 a hypnosis exercise that is called white cloud chair or safe place or colo dolo or Levitation is uh, how to, to take care of yourself and something else. And they learn it during session. We give them eight sessions during two years. It, there was two hour session where they learned self-care and self-hypnosis. So, and during surgery, we stay near the patient. It is not self-hypnosis learning. We, we had the patient to be uh, in uh, we had the patient to do this uh, during surgery. So is somebody is doing hypnosis with them during surgery and providing yeah. suggestions as they're going along. Is that right? Yes, okay. yeah, it's right. And, no. is, and is this a scripted approach or is this something? No, it's not that's... a scripted approach. It depends on the behavior of the patient. Okay. So if you could talk about that for a minute, for people who are trying to really understand what you're doing and how you're doing it, how I think, I think the details okay. would be valuable. Okay, it is a, really a patient titled uh, accompaniment. Yes. And after transfer to the operating room, we, we see the, the patient in the, in the first visit when we have, a, the patient decides to go to a surgeon and the surgeon can pay if it is he is able 
to perform the technique under hypnocitation. And afterward, the patient comes to the anesthesiologist and make a visit. And during this visit, we ask for their motivation to choose this technique. Uh, and we explain them what is a conscious elucidation that we give during the procedure, a very, very small amount of analgesic drug when needed, only then. But this patient is conscious during the whole procedure. And we make no dry run. We explain what is hypnosis by telling them that they put themselves in this state and that hypnosis is a gift that Mother Nature has given us and it can be used when we, are in, when we, when we want to use it. And what is important uh, during this procedure that the patient know that he must be motivated he must give his confidence in the whole team and that he uh, must collaborate with the anesthesiologists who uh, work with him. And the day of surgery, he takes nihil peos. And afterwards, uh, when he was transferred in the operating room, an intravenous lane was inserted and the monitoring was uh, done. Uh, each patient at this time was invited to choose a very pleasant life experience. And um, depending on the patient's need and what we observe, we give suggestion and we follow what happened during this, uh, the surgical procedure. It takes about three to five minutes to help the patient to come in this hypnotic state. We used very often an induction type of focalization of uh, eye fixation, muscle relaxation, uh, and afterwards we uh, help them to go to this pleasant life experience. And when the hypnotic state was induced, uh, then uh, we, uh, try, we, we are very aware to observe what happened during the procedure. And we used all different uh, events that occurred during surgery and we integrated in what he asked to be living during the procedure. And um, the surgeon performed local anesthesia before working uh, and uh, before he performed the surgery. And um, afterwards he operated the patient and the patient know that when he has pain or discomfort, we call it more discomfort, not pain, he can make a grimace, and when we observe a grimace, at this time we say to the surgeon only the word discomfort. And the surgeon know at this time that he must inject a little bit local anesthesia or a, a left attraction, a surgical manipulation, tissue manipulation. He modified tissue manipulation. And at the end of the operation uh, of the surgery, we ask uh, we keep uh, analgesic drugs. Uh, like paracetamol, and uh, immediately when the surgery is uh, finished, the patient is asked to come back uh, in the operating room and to be comf to have comfort even long uh, 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 long after the procedure, and he can go uh, in his room, and the, the, a lot of patients afterwards go home on the same day. And different kind of surgery can be done. Uh, a lot of plastic surgery, uh, uh, face lifting, uh, uh, breast augmentation, uh, nose operation, or um, even um, cervicotomy for part hyperthyroid surgery, thyroid surgery, even mammectomy, uh, debridement, or head or neck cancer can be done with this procedure. And um, uh, we have also turbinoplasty, liposuction, a lot of things can be done. And actually we have 18 patients that needed to be, um, uh, to have another type of um, anesthesia and we come from hypnosedation to general anesthesia. Only 18, 18 patients. 
that is a very small number. That's incredible. So when, when uh, patients are given the choice to have hypnosedation, and you're explaining to them that this is a gift from nature, that we have this ability, and yet we know that people differ in their abilities with mm -hmm. hypnosis quite a bit, but somehow yes. that doesn't seem to have much impact now, I think respond quite uh, well to your procedures. Yeah, we, we were convinced that the context will help the patient to uh, move his own resources to be uh, to protect himself and to put himself in the hypnotic state. Mm -hmm. And we have also, as anesthesiologists, the opportunity to help them with a little bit drugs, analgesic drugs. And so we can complete when we work with virtuos. If there are uh, people who is uh, who are virtuos in hypnosis, they need they don't need drugs, only local anesthesia. But when we work with people who is lesser uh, talented to put themselves in the hypnotic state, these people can be helped by um, a little, very small amount of uh, analgesic drugs that are given via the intravenous line. Uh, directly to the patient, but what is important that the patient must stay conscious during the whole procedure. You cannot use hypnosedation with unconscious patients. It's not possible. Right. And uh, you, you, the anesthesiologists are aware that the patient um, is in this state. He observes what happened, and he adapt uh, on the need what he observed and on the monitoring what patient. So now that your clinic has performed 9,000 surgeries like this, has it changed your view of hypnosis over time in any way? Has your understanding of what role hypnosis plays in this process changed at all over time? Yeah, I think when you learn hypnosis, you learn to use the patient resources. You learn to observe and to use what the patient brings us. And um, you put them, um, you, you, you put more confident and you, you give this confidence also to your patient that they are able to cope with stressful events and to help themselves to be more active during, during surgery or during the health problem. And this is, uh, I think, very uh, amazing for us. As a um, doctor, I was trained that uh, when a health problem occurs, the solution comes very often outside the patient, from the patient, with drugs, with procedure, with mm -hmm. surgery. Right. And since I used hypnosis, I discovered that the patient had a lot of resources that they must only take confidence to use it. And uh, at this time, we, we discover also as healthcare provider that um, this helps really the patient. And uh, this gives the patient autonomy and also responsibilities during the Proceed, uh, the, uh, the, the, not the procedure afterwards, during the healing process. Yes. Now, you're, you're speaking to something I think is very important, that this kind of experience is obviously good for you as the person doing the procedure, but how good it is for the patient to discover that they have this ability from within yeah, yeah. That, that can make a difference in how they see themselves and how they... Yeah, and I think they grow after this experience. A lot of patients say, after this, I have, they were very proud to have uh, oh, success, yeah. to have this uh, successful uh, operation under hypnosedation. And I think that this will help them also for their self-esteem and uh, will help them that they are able to cope with stressful events. That's um, it's, a, it's, it's a good message for them. It's an excellent And I, therefore, I, 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 really, um, I really like to use hypnosis and we use it every day uh, with groups or uh, in surgical procedure is uh, 
only one patient with one anesthesiologist, but here in oncology context, in a chronic pain patient context, we used at this time a um, group session where we learn the patient to do something for themselves and to, uh, to, take a, to be a real partner in uh, the, this procedure and uh, to come out of the problem, of the vicious circle of the pain problem or the oncologic dis uh, problem. And they discover that it will help them to have lesser anxiety, lesser uh, depression, lesser uh, emotional distress, and better sleep and quality of sleep. And um, though uh, the quality of life increased after these different learning procedures. And uh, we have done different studies, clinical studies, and we have discovered it in these different studies. These studies were published, and it lasted more than immediately after the session. So even one year later, they can use it and have a benefit of these procedures. That's fantastic. This way of learning. Yeah, that is fantastic. How do other anesthesiologists look at these procedures? Yeah, we, since 1994, we uh, give um, a course to anesthesiologists. It's a course, hypnosis focused on specific cro acute, chronic, and palliative care. And so, uh, only anesthesiologists, doctors, psychologists working with this kind of problem or dentists can uh, attend this course. It, the course lasts 110 hours and they can learn it. We have a lot of young anesthesiologists who can use this technique. And by learning this technique, I think they learn to communicate differently with their patient. They learn also to build up a, a therapeutic relationship. There is a lot of things that they have learned only to put themselves with another in this hypnotic state and to, to have a, a very formative uh, and, and a good uh, uh, information, a good, uh, good information, a good um, way to learn it. It's important that they learn it. And uh, this change really uh, the way they, uh, they see hypnosis. And um, I think in the future, we must also do uh, more clinical excellent uh, studies uh, to convince people uh, that hypnosis can be a very uh, effective and cost-effective uh, adjunct to other treatments. Well, you know, you have published so extensively so many valuable research articles and the information is available through the journal articles that you write. What do you think has to happen in this field in order for more people to start doing these things? You know, what you're doing is leading the way. This is very common in America, it's very uncommon in other places. How do we extend this to more medical schools, more physicians, especially anesthesiologists and surgeons? What yeah. do you think has to happen? Yeah, I think uh, to convince them, they need studies. Uh, and, and they need uh, also that um, uh, people explain it in, um, in uh, uh, a conference and uh, accept to give uh, uh, meetings and accept to give uh, even information uh, about the procedure. And uh, we work on this since years. And I've already given more than 200, even public uh, uh, lecture, uh, and also I participate, I accept to participate in TV reports to explain exactly what it is. It's important that we do this uh, to promote this technique and um, to help people to see hypnosis otherwise than they, that 
then they were uh, inform informed about uh, uh, spec hypnosis spectacle. Uh, it is um, uh, show hypnosis. Yeah. A lot of um, a lot of people see show hypnosis in on TV. Right. And I think hypnosis is something that uh, manipulates them. And uh, by giving this information, by uh, showing them different studies, slowly, uh, it, it takes time, yes, uh, they come to the conclusion that it is important. And uh, we must teach this technique uh, also to people that is not yet uh, interested in hypnosis and therefore I accept to go to intensive care units team to uh, uh, to uh, oncologist uh, and to speak about what we can do with this uh, uh, tool with hypnosis. Some of the research that you have published has been about brain changes in hypnosis. Yes. Yeah. And, and a little earlier, you said that the brain in hypnosis is quite different than in the usual waking state. Do you think that it is important for practicing clinicians to understand something about these brain changes? And if so, what do you think they should understand? Yeah, I think we are actually in a period of time where people need um, facts. And when they see brain activation on sheets, uh, I think it's, it's sometimes they are more convinced that this something happened with this technique. And when you say, ah, yes, uh, the patient said that he feel better, he's less anxious and something else. So these neuroimaging studies uh, about brain functioning and consciousness will help us to bring this technique also to uh, a very hardly convincible scientific uh, people. Uh, so I think it's important to do it. And uh, also to publish in, uh, in journals with, uh, with peer review, but also with a high index. And, Clinical study have not so high index than fundamental studies, and uh, to publish it in this kind of uh, journals will help also younger uh, researcher to be proud to work on a topic where they can publish in very good high impact journals. And I think therefore it's important that we do this work. And where they can prove that there is, in fact, a... Yeah, they need effect. proof, but uh, I think it's maybe also... Um, when we check what happened in the brain, we do nothing about the relationship. We see only brain activation in a specific context with a specific hypnotic suggestion. And though... We, we, can, we have not yet understand what happened during hypnosis, but this kind of study help people to have access that something is true about behind hypnosis. And uh, therefore, I think this is important also. I'm very happy to hear you emphasize the importance of the relationship and as being an important factor in yeah. performing successful hypnosis, especially in pressured situations like surgery. Yeah. How would you describe the qualities of the relationship that seem to make the most impact? The qualities, qualities of the relationship that improve hypnotic responsiveness. Uh, first, um, first is to observe the patient and to listen to him. And really listen means that I can use what he brings and even transform it in a more therapeutic or metaphorical way 
that he can understand that he can do something for himself. And um, it, this respectful relationship where when I hear what the patient needs, what are his resources he can activate to come out of the problem, I think this and the way I communicate with patients, my words can heal, but they can also hurt. And this all together help me to build up a good relationship, a therapeutic relationship. And I have learned this with hypnosis technique. This is such an important point you're making that I want to re-emphasize the ability to help and the ability to hurt and how important it is then to take the extra care to yeah. want to do your best to help someone. Yeah. Well, you have been wonderful in describing all of these things that you've been doing, and I really appreciate it. I would like to ask one more personal question. When you're not working, what do you enjoy doing? Uh, I enjoy to play with my two grandchildren. Uh, I enjoy gardening, cooking, walking, cycling, uh, walking on the beach, uh, very simple things. Uh, uh, and I enjoy to be, uh, to be alive, really. <laughs> I think it's a gift, especially when you work with palliative care patients. Yeah. You know uh, the, the chance, 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 uh, the chance. No, the chance to be alive and to be even in good health, actually. That's wonderful. But really to, 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 um, to enjoy the presence. Yeah. It's a cadeau, we say on, uh, in French. That's a great answer. And I think that I will end our discussion there. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and to share your ideas. There will be many people who are new to the profession who will be reading this and hearing this, who I think will be inspired by the quality of what you've done and the innovation of what you've done. I can only imagine the courage that it has taken for you to do the things that you've been doing. Uh, these are not easy patients to work with. Uh, these are not easy problems to treat. And you have made a fantastic contribution. And I want to say thank you for that. Thank you also. It was a real pleasure to, to discuss with you. And I know that you have done a, a lot of work to promote hypnosis uh, as a, a very uh, tool in healthcare. And I think you have put a lot of energy to, to do it. And I'm uh, very grateful for it the work you have done also. I have read your books, books since years uh, uh, and, and I like it very much. And all this help, we are a, a chain where we help us each other. And thank you very much. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care.